want to give you a fresh um, perspective. I feel like God just gave me a fresh look at, at the, the thing of baptism. We teach a text I've never taught before in 20 years of preaching. In Acts chapter 19, um, it says this. You can follow along on the screen if you have a copy of the Bible. It says, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, that'd be the Apostle Paul, wrote half the New Testament, took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. If you've ever looked at the New Testament and seen the book of Ephesians, um, this is who Paul's writing to, the people in Ephesus. He planted a church there. And there he found some disciples, and he asked them, some disciples, all right, and he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now, we make the assumption, because we're reading the Bible, that they believed in Jesus, but don't make that assumption. Just they believed something, and Paul's asking them if they received the Holy Spirit. They answered, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit, so they don't know anything about that. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? That's an important question. And they said, John's baptism, they replied. All right? Paul said, John's baptism was one of repentance. He told them to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. All right, is everybody with me so far? All right, here's the thing that you've got to understand about baptism that is critical. Baptism in ancient time and even today was a symbol. It was a a public way of saying, I identify or I believe or I affirm the teachings of whosever name I'm being baptized in. So if you just read the New Testament, you'll think, oh, Jesus was the only one that baptized. No, it was an ancient custom that everybody in the crowd would have understood that if they're being baptized in water in that name, then that means they're following the teachings of that religious leader. Are y'all with me so far? Come on, every campus, you with me? All right, so this is why, this is why Paul comes to them and he asks, what baptism did you receive? Because they evidently had been in around the area of Jerusalem whenever John was preaching. And John's message, the Bab- John the Baptist, that's who they're talking about. Um, and Baptist isn't like John was the first you know, Baptist like denomination that didn't exist. Um, the better translation is John the Baptizer. They called him John the Baptist because he was the one that would baptize people. His message was this, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now the word repent, we learned last week, simply means to a change of mind. It means a 180 turn. It means I'm living life my way, going this way. I'm turning 180 degrees, and I'm going God's way. Are you with me so far? That's simply what repent means. It means a change of mind, a changeover from I'm going to be the master, the Lord, the leader of my life. No, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to make God the master, the Lord, the leader of my life. That's what repentance is, all right? Um, It it sounds a lot more scary when you got a bullhorn on the end of a corner, repent or you're going to hell. Like, all right, let's don't do that. If you do that, please stop. It embarrasses all of us. It's repent. It's a change of mind. Are you following me? So that was John's baptism. So these people in Ephesus had been baptized in John's baptism. And what they were saying is we believe what John is saying and we agree with him that we should repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right. Now to them, the kingdom of heaven was going to be established one day and Messiah was going to come, but they didn't know who Messiah was, but they at least took a step in the direction of Jesus. Are you following me without even knowing who Jesus was? Are y'all following me so far? Okay, so that's what he asked them. And he says, have you received the Holy Spirit? And go, we don't even know about that. Because they didn't have like media like we have today. There was no Instagram. There was nobody's story. Nobody was, you know, getting stories of everything, the life, Jesus. Hey, look what he did today. 5,000 people got fed with a little fish and a bread. Hey, look what he did today. Lazarus, he was dead. See, remember my story when he died? New story. He's alive now. You know, like none of that. They didn't have any of that back then. So they, the people from Ephesus travel into Jerusalem, which this was the center of, of culture of life. They all travel in from all over the place. They travel in. They, they hear John preaching, repent the kingdom of heaven. They're like, wow, we believe that. We'll get baptized in that. Then they go back to Ephesus. Yeah. Yeah. So years have passed now, yeah. and there's no way that they knew about Jesus. This guy, Jesus, came on the scene, and John baptized him. And, and then he said, no, I'm not even worthy to unbuckle your sandals. And, and then Jesus like did all kinds of cool stuff, like feeding the 5,000, like open blinded eyes, like raising people from the dead. Then he, he dies on a cross. Then he goes in the grave. Then he raises again three days later. And then he ascends to the Father after appearing to 400 people. And so they, they, this story doesn't make it. So here's Paul. Yeah. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. All right, so here's Paul. He goes to Ephesus and he goes, and their disciples, they believed. What have they believed? John, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he says, oh, if you ever see the Holy Spirit, then what baptism did you get? What water baptism did you get? And they go, John's. And then Paul goes, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. You need to know about Jesus. 
Are you following me? And so when they hear about Jesus, then verse 5, you can read it on your own. Verse 5, they go, and immediately they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Why? Because they realized that John was pointing to Jesus and Jesus was the thing they were really after. That was the kingdom of God coming into the earth, the person of Jesus. Are you following me so far? So immediately what they do, they got baptized. And then verse 6. Then it says in verse 6, and this is the thing that God, like the Spirit of God, I was like, wow, I haven't seen this before. It says, and then verse 6, then Paul prayed for them and they received the Holy Spirit. So there was something available to them. There was a blessing available to them that they could not get until they were baptized in water. And here's what I feel like the Spirit of God said to me, is that there are many of you that have said yes to Jesus and live frustrated in your Christian life because you haven't been obedient in this simple step of baptism. That there are all kinds of blessings on the other side of baptism that it would be unlocked for you if you'd simply take this simple step. It's a simple instruction. It has a profound result. It's called the first step of obedience. It's called believer's baptism. Why is it called believer's baptism? Because it's meant for... It's not a trick question. (laughs) Y'all are smarter than this. I've taught you better. It's believer's baptism because it's for... It's believers, right? Because you believe. But it's the first step of obedience. Why is it called the first step of obedience? I need you to understand this. Is because whenever you receive Jesus into your life, whenever you say, I realize that I have sin in my life, that I am a sinner, and that's not a condemning statement, it's just all of us are in that boat. Whenever you say that, okay, I realize that, that I I blow it in life, that I miss the mark, which is what sin means, that I miss the mark of, of God's standard in my life. I don't ever live up to that. Jesus knew he wouldn't, so he sent his son. He came into the earth. Jesus did. He, he lived the perfect life that you and I could never live. He died on the cross, and then he rose again three days later. And, and I don't care what you believe about world religions. I'm going with the guy that got back up from the dead. That's who I'm going with. Are you with me? Like, I'm going to go with him. So he got back up out of the dead. He appeared to over 400 people. So unless there were mass hallucinations happening that time, 400 people saw Jesus get up out of the grave. So I'm going to go with the historical account too. I'm not just going to go with the guy that got up from the dead. I'm going to go with the historical account of the guy that got up from the dead. Because not only the Bible records that, other documents record it. So my faith isn't just in some kind of feeling. It's in the facts of history and the facts of God's word. So I just want to encourage you today, maybe you're here today and you think you have to check your brain at the door to be a Christian. You don't have to check your brain. Actually, you have to engage your brain to be a believer. And so Jesus did all that to give us forgiveness of sin, to save us from. The Bible used that word, you're saved. You may have heard that around church. I got saved. Well, what does that mean? You get saved from something. What do you get saved from? The penalty of your sin. What is the penalty of your sin? It's an eternal separation from God. All right? You get saved from that, but you just don't get saved from something. It's not like I got my fire insurance, you know, I pass, jug, pass go, don't have to go to jail, right? Collect $200. Old, old illustration. Update that. Monopoly. All right. You don't just get saved from something, you get saved to something. You get saved to a life of purpose. You get saved to a life of peace and of hope. Like the story we read, I mean, I thought he was having a heart attack, going to see a cardiologist, meets Jesus, and the peace of God that passes understanding overwhelms his heart and his mind, doesn't need any pill. Are are you following me? You get saved to something. You get saved to a life that that Jesus said it this way in John 10, 10, I've come that you may have life and you might have it to the full. He said, I've come to give you something, not just to save you from something. I've come to save you to something. But here's the deal. Get this. Are y'all with me? So Jesus did all the work for our salvation. There is nothing that you can do. There is no amount of work that you can do to merit his grace. You don't earn it. That's why it's called the gift of God. All you do is bring faith. All you do is believe. But the Bible says that we've all been given a measure of faith by God. So watch this. Even the measure of faith that you have to believe in Jesus was given to you by him. The work for your forgiveness of sin was done by him. (coughs) So both of them together, you did nothing. Are y'all with me? 
Come on, are y'all following me? <clears throat> so the first act or step that you take of obedience is baptism because it's the first thing that you can actually do. And so in response to the love of God, in response to his goodness, in response to the fact that without him, you're hopelessly lost. Without him, there is no hope. And you did nothing to get it. He just loved you so much. He just cared about you so much. He just wanted relationship with you so much. Not religion, not rituals, not rules. He wanted relationship with you so much that he gave Jesus to be brutally murdered on a cross to pay for the penalty of your sin. Jesus went through hell, so you don't have to. And out of response to that, what he's asking us is, hey, why don't you publicly identify with me? Why don't you publicly, through this thing called baptism, are you with me? Yes. Sorry. So the other day I came home and uh, I, was, I was in Tammy's car because Tammy was on a road trip and I don't do road trips. <laughs> so I stayed home. Um, she was two day road trip to... Missouri and two days back to visit some, her family and um, she tells me that the boys were awesome in the car. <laughs> the other two were there. <clears throat> um, but I had her car and she had my car, some more space in my car and so I had her car and for some reason didn't have a house key on her key ring which I got to fix. Um, so I get into the garage and, and uh, just miscommunication, um, the door to the mudroom is locked. And I have no key. And she wasn't home, so when she's not home or the kids aren't home, I just take advantage and I, I stay at the office till late. So it was late, and um, I was like, this is awesome. I just want to go to bed because 21 days of prayers in the morning, and that means I'm up at 4.30, and I was up at 4.30 the night before, and now it's like 8.30 at night, and I just, you know, 14-hour days are long days, and so I just want to get in. So then I start roaming the, around the edge of the house, right? And I'm like looking to see if any of the latches are moved. <clears throat> so I can crawl through a window, like tear a screen out. And there's only a few that I can reach because the slope of the, the grade of the yard and also the, the back deck, I can see those. Around the front of the house, I can see those, and that's about it that I can see. And <clears throat> none of them are uh, unlocked. And I'm standing outside my house going, I own this thing, <laughs> and I can't get in this thing. <laughs> this is mine. I own everything in it. The only thing I'm making a payment on is the mortgage. Everything else is mine. Couch is mine, TVs are mine, I can't enjoy any of it. The shower is mine, hello somebody. I can't enjoy anything in this house and it's all mine, all because I didn't have the key. Yeah. I just felt like God was like, this is where a lot of Christians are. Yeah. I've given them the inheritance of heaven yeah. and every blessing that heaven has to offer and they're roaming around it trying to find a window to crawl through when I've given them the key of baptism that would unlock so much in their life. And I'm just trying to get you the key today to unlock so much in your life. You know, it's the last thing that Jesus told us to do. It's the last thing. Like, it, he's, he's like got the disciples there. It's, it's pep talk moment. It's time. Like, he's about to leave. He's about to ascend to the Father and sit at the right hand and be in heaven. And he's like, all right, guys, I'm about to leave. Girls, I'm about to leave. We're going to, you know, the last, like, locker room talk. Like, here we go. It's... It's first, you know, first game of the season, college football. Thank you, God, that's back next week. It's the last, yesterday was your, the last day of the drought, <laughs> the sports drought. Um, and so he's about to give the locker room talk, and here's what he says. Like, he can, say, he can say a whole lot of things, and here's what he says, Matthew 28, we call it the Great Commission. He says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. In other words, let them know about the gospel. Let them know what I've been teaching you. And then he says this, then what, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, time out. He could have said a lot of things right here. He could have said, go and make disciples of all nations and, and, and look out for the poor and the needy and the voiceless. And that would have been awesome. And that would have been great, right? I mean, he could have said, hey, go make disciples of all nations and, and make sure that you provide for the orphan, which I think would have been awesome. Something we should do. But he didn't. He, he's given them the last talk, the last like, here we go. This is what you need. I'm about to leave, and this is what you need. 
This is what you need to carry out this mission across the globe. Get in water. He says, and then after that, he says, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So it's teach them, make disciples, help them know the gospel, baptize them, and then teach them all this other stuff. And my concern for some of you is that you've said yes to Jesus, you've jumped to all the other stuff, and trying to do all the other stuff is so frustrating because you haven't followed the order. You haven't followed the order. It's believe, then be baptized. It's believe, then be baptized. It's pretty important, I would think, if it's the last thing Jesus said. And baptism is simply a symbol. It doesn't save you. It's simply a symbol. I said last week, it's like the wedding band of salvation. The wedding band doesn't make you married. It just lets everybody know you are married, right? Baptism is simply that. It's a public, it's, it's identification. It's a, it's a public declaration of an inward transformation that has happened in your life. Even Jesus was baptized, right? And I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Acts 19. Y'all still with me? Remember Acts 19? Have you received the Holy Spirit? No, we don't know anything about that. Who you've been baptized in? John. John was in repentance. Oh, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. Then they got the Holy Spirit and like this whole new thing locked, opened up for them. Are y'all following me? Y'all got it? Look what happened to Jesus, the son of God. Matthew chapter three. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. Why would Jesus need to be baptized? Because he was identifying and affirming the message of John that repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So by being baptized by John, he was saying, John is right. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Here it is. Are y'all following me? That's what he was doing. But John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized you. And do you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, prophetic words have been spoken about this. I need to do it. And so then John consented. Verse 16, watch this. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I loved. And with whom I'm well pleased. Go back to verse 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized. Put up verse 16 for me. 16. There we go. At that moment, heaven was opened. The Son of God came from heaven. Fully God, fully man. Heaven did not open over him until he was baptized. Baptism unlocks something even for Jesus to begin his earthly ministry. It was a key. And so if it's a key for Jesus, it's gotta be one for you. It's gotta be one for you. Every time someone is baptized in the New Testament, it is after they have believed. They're not baptized before they believe, they just get wet. They're not baptized because someone said, do you wanna avoid hell? Then go get baptized. It's not because everybody else was doing it. That was a cool thing to do. It's because they believed and then they were baptized. I want to read you a few of them. Are you still with me? I want to read you a few of these passages that state this. Acts 2.41. I don't want you to take my word. I want you to see God's word. Those who accepted his message were what? Say it loudly. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They didn't go to a class, Pastor? No, no classes. They didn't join the church there in Jerusalem, the, you know, the first church of Jerusalem, Community Church International, Church of God in Christ. No, they did not. They heard the message. They believed. You mean they didn't pray a prayer? You mean that John didn't say, or Peter didn't get up on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 and say, everybody repeat after me? No, they didn't do that. They said, we believe. Let's go get baptized immediately. And 3,000 did it that day. I just think of logistically sometime about that day. You must have got baptized yourself, and then they grabbed you and said, go baptize those 10. You must have got out the, like, immediately out of the water. I mean, logistically, how'd it work? And like, anyways, just, there. all right. Evidently, you don't think about it as much as I do. Acts 8, but when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ, they were what? Come on, every campus. 
Some of you are like, if I say the word, I may have to go do it. I don't want to say it. Acts 8 says, then Philip began to preach that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. This is the Ethiopian eunuch. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? Acts 9, immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. This is Saul, who would change his name to Paul, be the Apostle Paul. He could see again. He had been blinded by the Damascus Road experience for several days. But immediately when he could see, the first thing he did was not get a shower, not get something to eat. He got up and he was what? He was baptized. Acts 10, can any one of these people... Can we keep any one of these people from being baptized with water? They've received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered them that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ when they asked Peter to stay with him a few days. Acts 16. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. And when she and the members of her household were what? They're baptized. They invited them to stay. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and I believe this is where some of you are today. He was a religious man. He was a ruler in the synagogue, but he had not encountered Jesus. He had met religion. He had met form. He had met function. He had met protocol, but he had not encountered a personal relationship with Jesus. When he did, the entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed, and they were what? They were baptized. Acts 19, Paul said, John's baptism, what we just read, was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. And on hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 22, last one. Then he said, the God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear the words from his mouth. You know what's beautiful today? Is that you get to hear this message in your language, in your tongue, and God has chosen you to be able to reveal this to some places in the world that don't have this message. And you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard, verse 16, and now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, wash your sins away, calling on his name. So that's my question to you today. And now, what are you waiting for? Every location, what are you waiting for? Get up. Be baptized. Well, I was baptized as a kid. Well, then just a question of motive. Had you personally made a decision to follow Jesus? If not, then today's your day. For some of you, you're thinking, well, I was baptized as an infant. And as I said last week, it was an incredibly, I'm sure, meaningful moment for your parents. But what they were doing in that moment was by faith, believing that your faith would become your own. And today would be very full circle. It would be the answer to their prayer. And there is not one account in all of the scripture where an infant is baptized. It is always, always Always, after someone has placed their faith in Jesus. Well, I don't know if I want to join this. This isn't about joining a church. This isn't even about me and you. It's about you and Jesus. If you like it here, then welcome home. If you don't, keep coming. You'll eventually like it here. <laughs> Maybe you're thinking, well, I don't want to be the first one to go. Well, I've, I've got that covered for you, too. Maybe you're thinking, I didn't come prepared, but we prepared everything for you. Clothes, change of clothes, everything you can need. You know, if, if you put it in your hair, if you, whatever, we got it. Everything. And guess what? You won't have to be go, you won't have to go first either. We've had so many people respond today. I'm telling you, my mind's really been blown. I'm really, really thankful that, um, I didn't cancel today. And so today in this service, every service, somebody has gone first. And so in this service, will you help me welcome Albina Ashworth to the stage? Hey, come on in. Come on, show her some love. Step right down in here. You can sit down. You can sit down. 
I want to read you her story. She said, I was baptized as a child, but I didn't know anything or why it was happening. I feel like some of you may be in that position. Growing up as a church and a kid, I never really felt a connection with God. But after going through life, a separation and breast cancer, I needed strength and I found my strength in Jesus. God's been really good to me, not letting me fail financially as a single mother, providing for me and my three daughters, giving me the strength physically and emotionally that I needed through the breast cancer journey and recently getting me to the finish line. Congratulations. Awesome. Finishing 16 rounds of hard chemotherapy. I've grown in my faith tremendously. I have a stronger relationship with God. Life One has given me community through my amazing small group, has helped my girls get to know God through Kids Point, and we have the best leadership in this season. I want to make it official, publicly proclaim my faith in Jesus by getting baptized today. Hey, we're so proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of all you fought through. So proud of you caring for your girls, putting God first. In an easy season where it'd be easy to quit, make a lot of excuses. You haven't made excuses. You fought through. And it's just an honor to baptize you today. And so because of your profession of faith in Jesus, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Come on, let her know how proud you are. So awesome. We remain standing at every campus. If you're not standing, please stand up. I believe if she can do it, you can do it. Fought through so much, putting Jesus first. She has every reason to not publicly let everybody know. What a powerful story.